Hi all. Right, back with more Redvers Reverse. This is part three. Um, so, yeah, a couple of things starting to happen, but uh, it is a bit of a slow start. A um, couple of things. Uh, this is just the day after I done last night. Um, and I was swithering about... We had the priorities here uh, within the board target chart. And uh on here. Just a flying a bit over the place. Uh, then cards can go further away, Grant. I don't think we need that really. There's a there's a quite good example. Um oops, that was upside down. This is the board targeting examples to show you about once it starts getting a bit complex about what they will target. So whether we might need that further down the line. We'll see, but at the moment it's reasonably simple. However, we were wondering about the priorities regarding uh, the actual, once you've found the area, about what you target within that area. I should say, once you've selected the area with the, the bore zone chart and then also the bore plot chart, then within that area, this is a bore target chart, but which unit you'll target. And of course we were a bit stuck as to it doesn't really I don't think it says in the rules. And uh, it was asking a question back in back in twenty eighteen by George. Um how do you select target unit if multiple qualify in the same category? Let's say I have four battalions belonging to a brigade in an area which was selected as target for the board's rifle phase. How do I choose? Randomly? Question mark. The best worst morale, the best the most less steps. Because that's the thing, you could have, there's nothing that states in there. I just, I'll want to target a routed unit first. Then I'll want to target a mounted regiment first. But I mean, it says mounted regiment. If they're all mounted, I suppose then they're all valid targets. Uh, then it'll drop down to if the battalion's in close order or whatever. But how do you, if at the mo moment we had just, uh, well, in our circumstance, we had just, I suppose, just other battalion. It's just a battalion. But there's four... Um, sorry, there's four battalions in the brigade. And there, there's nothing... But I was wondering if one of them had took a step loss or if one of them had had a hit on it or one of them had the worse morale. But none of that says... Anyway, the designer does... Um, was Godfrey Bailey, who was, who was partly involved in the design, I think, yeah. He replies, oh, hi George, since there is no further priority breakdown, if there is more than one British target of the same priority on the board target chart, the player chooses which British unit is the target. And as we know after that, which says, no, the use of British formations of multiple supporting lines in this period allows the player to decide which unit is deployed in the front line of the target area at that point and thus takes the hits. So, yeah, that's a good, good uh, reply, I think. Um, I think it should be clearer than the rules, but uh, we've got the answer. So between these four, I mean, let, let's just say this one had taken a step loss, this one was reduced, you know, um, and that one had a strength point hit on it, and let's just say this one was, well, not routed, because routed is the priority, but let's just say one was suppressed and one was distressed, um, disrupted. <laughs> This is it this suppressed and disrupted and routed, yeah. So let's see you had all these circumstances on them. None of them are the, are within the board target chart priorities. So it's you that gets to decide which one is hit. And like the designer says there, you know, you can say that like the guy that's hit, he's he's at the back maybe, he's not like involved. He's you know, you, you choose who's up front doing the fighting. So um, that's fine. That's good. So we get to pick unless it's part of the priorities, the six priorities there. So um, I think we resolved that one all right. Now, I found the answer... Well, I think I found the answer to the other one that I had. And this was regarding the hidden status of... And we left this last night in this situation where this guy was hidden. He was the one that was doing the firing. And then when we drew out the cup for the strength point, we drew a minus two. Which then meant that working out the sums, he could not, it was impossible for him to roll a D6 and get a hit. So it was, it was, 
And whenever this guy fire, whenever these guys fire, they lose these and permanently lose these. They don't regain them again. And this is worth a plus two to them when we come to fire at him. So it's rather silly of him to do that. But what what I was wondering about is when we draw this, is he not committed to fire him? Well, this is what this guy asks. Um, as part of his question, Richard, back in 2022. Uh, he says, the hidden status is a key defence value for the boar units. When does a boar unit take the shot and forfeit its hidden status? I've been playing that if the calculated DRM impact gives the boar any chance of a hit, it takes the shot. Right, I'll just stop there before reading the, reading the last sentence. So he's saying he would calculate and say, right, yeah, we can take the shot because there is a possibility I might roll a six and get a hit. However, that's... This is what the last sentence includes. He, he finishes with the last sentence. He says, this includes the plus minus chip pool. Is this correct? So he's drawn this first before then making the decision if he fires. And I think, to, to be honest, the designer, I, I believe the answer is that that's correct, right? But I don't feel like that's written well enough in the rules that, because it does, it does, um, that SP counter add gets added. Uh, where is it? What is the word done? Yeah, resolve fire in order of strongest fire unit first. Unless already pre unless already present, place an SP counter on a firing commando. That to, that to me says that he's firing, right? And uh, um, okay. I mean that the, the answer's been that you would check this first. Fair enough. I think it should be clear on the rules again. Um, so the answer was... Um, what he said, Richard. He says, a boar fires, as per rule 10.2, which is what I was just reading there out of the rules. A boar unit forfeits its marker showing hidden status when it first fires. You are correct. They must have a chance of success, which is, and, and he's got in brackets, which is a die roll eight or, eight or more to fire. He says, and then he finishes with, this does include the SP chip pools, which is listed as a bore fire modifier. So he, lists, he, he suggests that because it's, it's listed as a bore fire modifier, that you would draw that first before then making the decision. And yeah, I suppose, maybe. Because you haven't, haven't rolled the dice yet. So maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's a fair point. I think... It needed to be asked that question, like uh, uh, is all. Um, uh, I think it could have been it could have been clearer, and I think it was a worthy question to ask. So, however, that did mean that when we drew this before we actually took the fire on, we then found out it was impossible to hit. So I was I left things last night with, right. If I find out the answer is what I think it is, I'm going to remove that hidden marker because I feel like he should still be trying to fire. However, the answers come back that no, because we drew this, it's impossible for him to hit. So he's going to keep his hidden status, which is a bit of a bummer. But anyway, that's from the designer. So there we go. All is good. Um, okay, that was only two things, I think. Yeah, and I released the first part out there to the to the world. So we'll see how it get, gets received and if anybody thinks... Uh, I had the comment from one of my followers saying that it looked like a, a nice game and I was enjoying myself and yeah I mean component wise it's really good the big counters aren't they the big chunky counters um so yeah components are good the map's nice I, I, it's just the rules I mean it's got all the bits there it's just I think the rules are uh needing some attention uh unless of course that is just Grant being Grant uh, okay, yeah, and um, I don't think, let's see, I, I watched back the first part, but I think it was all okay. We almost blundered with uh, moving these guys and s thinking they had their objective at the time, but um, yeah. Yeah, I felt, I, I think everyone's okay. So let's let's just push on. Right, try to get space to put the tripod now, it's a little more awkward. Yeah, I've not. Well, that was just last night I recorded that. The two part, the two parts. To be honest, um, I'm not going to bother with the the cards as of yet. 
but I can definitely see them being beneficial. And if anybody is interested in this game, I would probably suggest that you do print the, the cards out and then it can be easier. Um, it, well, you know what? It'd be easier for me because I'm doing a recording of it and I could have the cards. It's a perfect wee area that I could find to place the cards down actually on the map, left-hand corner here on the map, which doesn't seem to be getting any use anyway. Um, it's just, yeah, I've just not got round. It's just the hassle of <laughs> printing the cards out, to be honest. Okay, British event saying, man. So, return the Coast Order. We've no Coast Order or the Bob Hart yet. So, and then we're going to draw a British event. So, it's up that corner. We'll just grab that while we're there. And we'll probably have to come down and look to see what it does anyway. Right, there we go. British event. Ah, oh, same one as we had the last time. Um, so, fourth light activated. So, we can give it a different order. I think that's going to be kind of pointless because we spent all that time working out that that was probably the best place for it to go. Um, and it, it was a May, I remember. Stretching around there. Fourth light, Boer is killed, right. Uh, the fourth light, Brigade Objectives Marker, unless showing a fail, may immediately be placed in any other area further, no further than five hey, um, areas away. So... Um, I don't think we're going to bother with that, so I'm just going to chuck that back in the cup, and we're going to move on. Okay, so British Command Point Segment. If Bulwer is with the HQ, if with, if Bulwer with HQ Operative, Operative, collect three ECPs, well, he's not with the HQ, and the HQ is not Operative anyway. So if he's alone or dead, he collects one CP. I'll just move on a little bit here. So he's going to collect one CP, but remember, if Wong is beside... Well, it tells you there. So use Wong to place an objective marker in an area. Use one CP to place a planned objective marker in an area. Roll in the British send orders. And then repeat for each order sent. So, so Boer is down here on his own. So he gets one command point. And Wong is here, and he can give an order to the naval artillery section. Um, but they've got, their objective is here, it's set, so, now, yeah, just looking at, looking at down here, the, these are the ones that are not set, we've got the six fusiliers, well, Long can't help it, well, Boer's going to give that order, yeah, and we've got the second artillery brigade and the first artillery brigade, second artillery brigade are here, but they're quite comfortable, and that's why I didn't bother moving along with them, I think. And then the first artillery brigade are the ones that are way up there. And I think Long was going to head up that way with these uh, the naval artillery section and maybe be able to give an order either between them or them. But they're all sitting quite nice now, ready to be able to fire at something once they become <laughs> limbered, unlimbered. I'm never going to get that one. Once they can fire, right? Um, so I don't think Long's going to give an order. However, Buller is going to use his one order to the uh, the six fusiliers. So he's going to use that on them. And he's in the same area. So we don't need a roll for this. Um... Hang on, so we place, hang on, we place the planned objective, though. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, I just, I remember floundering a, a little bit with this last night as well when I came to do the second set of commands and whatever. I guess it's because the first ones are all set up historically and it's nice and easy. So we're going to give him an order. We're going to stick with the historical because he's struggled to get it happening. So we're just going to place it there. Um... I dare say, once you're past the first turn, I could probably place it in other places. Oh, one point that was brought up when I looked at... There's a couple of AARs out there, which I'd like to read through, actually. Yeah. There's one in particular, like it was worth a nice uh, read of and some pictures as well. It's good. Uh, and he, he started the game in the historical. Apart from the Mounted Brigade, he did not have a go into uh, Huang Wani. Huang Wani. Um, 
because, and the reason he said, because it's not five areas away. One, two, three, four, five. It's six areas away. And generally, you wouldn't be able to give an order like that. So I think he chose to drop that shot. But, I mean, that's the historical objective. So, I mean, it must be meant that that one's allowed. Eh? So I'm going to leave it as it is. But it was interesting to see that. Okay, so that's the planned objective for the six Fusilier. Right. And um, we're not going to give any other order through Colonel Wong. So back to the sequence of play. Right, so... Right, and then, then we would roll on the British Send Orders table, right? However, um, there's no need for a roll for this one because he's the, the six Fusiliers is in the same area as uh, Buller. So it's an automatic order arrives and it's the same turn. So basically... The six fusiliers objective marker gets put on there briefly, and we'll be bringing it down again shortly. So that was the only order that was sent. So British receive orders, and uh, this is when we need to roll, and this depends on the uh, the type of leader. What have we got? We got a C. So I think that's why he's struggling because he's just cautious. He's not. When he's, he's not sure about taking anything on. So we're going to go right through this to see if he carries out the order. Uh, there is only the one. And then if he does, we re re remove the planned objective marker and replace it with the objective marker. So yeah, he's a cautious leader. Oh, I've left my... No, oh, that's a way across the other side. Hang on. Sorry, I should have paused there. I, was, I had another little shot of uh, um, unconditional surrender, the Mediterranean scenario, so I had my wee dice tray across there. Nice box. Right, so, yeah, he's a cautious leader, so no modifiers, but we need greater than a six for a result here. So, here we go. Oh, that's better. Ooh, that might be... No, I think it's a 12 that takes some... Yeah, so 10, 7 to 11, it is as ordered, so that is good. Um, uh, so, I'm, I'm muddling this up again, I'm gonna, if game turn marker, yeah, no, that's when we bring the objective marker off the game turn, because it's the same turn. We bring it down and we see if it resolves, Grant. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right, but you're forgetting some bits. It should have brought it down off the game turn, because it, it was this turn it was played. So now that planned objective becomes an actual objective, and now the Fusiliers can get moving. Okay, good stuff. So, um, yeah, so that's the received order. So they've received their orders... We've removed the planned objective. There's no any or other orders. There's not an emergency withdrawal yet. So we're into the boar shell, shell... Well, we're into the shell fire phase. And then we're into the boar shell fire phase first. Um, right, rather than swing around there, a quick glance tells me... Uh, one... Oh no, they can reach. Did I realise that? One, two, no, they can reach both of them, Grant. So I must I must have known this. Right, so something's going to happen here. Uh, there's no board guns misfire. Uh, so we're going to refer to the fire procedure chart regarding the bore shell fire. So bore fire procedure chart. Remember, this doesn't just include the artillery side of it. It includes the, the rifle fire as well. But, it's, yeah, it's nice to have it on the one chart, but you've just got to remember that certain parts of it are not going to apply and certain parts are. So, we're going to generate one target area for each firing unit in order strongest firing force. Artillery target an area up to a range of three areas. Uh, commander's target area one. Well, that's not what we're doing right now. So, then we refer to the bore zone chart, then the bore plot chart. We... Find out, we're trying to find out our target area here. Um, and then we would move on to see what unit we would target in the area. However, for for the artillery, it just targets the whole area anyway. And so you don't specifically target a unit. And all artillery is, well, I say all artillery is going to do, it's either going to do nothing 
or it's going to disrupt the area or it's going to suppress the area. And I'm pretty sure uh, when I find that, it'll tell me that um, fertility rule two dice. Uh, Uh, roll two dice. Uh, British losses. If artillery fire causes a disrupted or suppressed result, place an appropriate marker on all British units in the target area. So that's it does. So we don't need to be worried about the bore target chart here because it just targets the whole area. It either does nothing to them, disrupts them all, or suppresses them all. And in that order, that goes from good for us to worse. Okay, so what are we doing? We're finding out where they're going to fire them. So there's two artillery units in the, for the boars. Uh, there's this one here. And you can see it's, it's too far away. One, two, three. It's not getting down. It's getting down to the fifth Irish objective, but there's not, there's not any British units there. But the one that is relevant is in the Colenso copies here. And remember, they are hidden and they're in their emplacement. This has got a strength of three, this artillery. So it can fire one, two, three zones, three areas. So it can it fire on this. It can also go one, two, and three into there as well. Is that right? One, two, and that's one area and three. Yeah. So it can actually it can actually fire at either one of these areas. Um one, two, three. It can get down to these artillery down here. Or these artillery, they're, they're one he one area. So it's, it's either that or that. So then you'd look at their priority, their zones. So none of the areas are adjacent to the red map edge, which is priority one. Priority two is they're not adjacent to the red map edge, but they're north of the river or they're in drifts and on bridges. Well, none of that, because they're both south of the river. So, priority A3 is C, which is all areas south of the river. So, they're both got the same priority. So, now we would put three port markers in here, and three port markers in here. Which, to me, means a die roll that says 1, 2, 3, or 4, 5, 6. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to roll 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and select them that way. Um... Yes, here we go. Right, one, two, three. So that's going to be the the fourth white. Okay. So that's going to be their target. Now, um, we need to just double check that they're going to be able to uh, fire this time. Um, now, they don't receive an SP chip out of the cup. So we don't need to worry about that. So we know what strength they are. They are three. So many commanders that get them. Again, it took me a while before. I think I had to look that one up on BGG as well. Although, oh, I'll tell you what it tells you. It tells you in the boar fire. Uh, it tells you somewhere that it's only the rifle fire. Where does it tell you? I know that the actual designer, because I looked it up on BGG, and he re he refers to um, some reference that tells you. Can't remember where it is. Maybe we'll come across it while looking through the chart. Anyway, as they don't receive the SP marker, so he's firing at three. And this is his target. So we get a single attack marker. Now it is only a single attack because. If you if you had another artillery with them, then they could join in, but um, that's not the case. So he's firing at a strength of three from three hexes away, three areas away, and it's just in there clear. That's just clear that heck at that area, isn't it? Yes, it is. So let's go across and look at the modifiers before we decide if he's going to fire because again, he doesn't want to remove his hidden marker. <laughs> Does that mean that uh, the commando stays hidden? I, I dare say it must. Hmm. 
or once he's fired in the hidden market, does that mean they both come out of that? I want to say I might have read something about that. Well, you, um, let's go and make sure they're going to fire first. I mean, I think they are. So here's the modifier. Well, let's just check the actual results that are needed. You can see there it's it's the same as the rifle fire, well, regarding the fact that someone OS is going to do nothing. So you need we need an 8. We need to be able to roll an 8. Now, our modifiers, now here's the boar fire modifiers. So uh, you would get plus 1 as a multiple attack. No, not getting that. Is there 9 or more stacking points? No, because we've been clever enough to only leave 8 stacking points. So no. Um, the present SP of the unit is 3. So that's a 3. There's not one of these. It's not disrupted, it's not suppressed, it's not in the same area. So it's still sitting at a 3. And this is the target, the British target. The British target is not routed. It's not in close order. It's not mounted. It's not in a drifter bridge area. It is not in a brush or hill. And it is not in Red Hill, Colenso or Fort Wiley areas and no boar units are present. you got to watch that one though because we... The second English is about to move into Colenso in this next term, so that would and and there's no boar units in there, so that will start benefiting them. So however, so there's no other modifiers. There's a plus three, so can we get an eight on a on a well yeah because sorry, it's a, it's a lot easier because this is the one that you roll two d six, so we in the, in actual fact. Yeah, you're always going to be able to have a chance, aren't you? Well, unless you got a lot of minus modifiers, I suppose. Uh, oh, I'm not going to look through that and try and work that out. Yes, it can happen. So they are going to take this fire on. Right, let's make move away. We might as well just roll that in. So they're getting a plus three. Um, right, and they need uh, at least an eight to get something. Two dice. Uh, six plus three, yeah, it's just going to be a nine. So... I feel like I might have something off there, but no, it's it's definitely. I mean, it says two d six, so we're right there, and it's only one d six for the rifle fire. Um, and they they have the strength of three. None of the other modifiers apply. They're all the six, so that is a nine. So yeah, it is indeed. So it's a disrupted result. So it does mean that all. The first, um, sorry, the fourth white units are disrupted. Um, I, I, my understanding is it doesn't, the, the leader doesn't actually get disrupted. Um, and I'm hoping that's right. Um, I don't think there's anything that affects him why he's disrupted. Uh, when we come to try and recover... There's modifiers, yeah, because the leader can, he can have a standing firm marker, or he can have a panicked marker. So, obviously, panic's not good, standing firm is good. That would help us recover. Um, but I don't think he actually gets a disrupted status, so it's just the units himself. Now, it's not too, it looks bad, that. I mean, no, it is bad, but, I mean, it's not too disastrous. It, it gives us a minus one. If these guys want to fire, they've got a minus one to their their attack. Which is bad considering we know that these guys are impossible to hit right now. <laughs> it doesn't help, does it? However, right, so that does mean that this guy's fired. So what I'm going to try and see if I can do now is see if... Now he's still in the emplacement, but he's not, he's not hidden anymore. But I'm wondering if this guy keeps his hidden stats or if because that guy fired, they both lose their hidden stats. Um, I'm not so sure I'm going to find that, but I feel like I'd read something about it somewhere. But then again, that could be another game. Certain games do that, don't they? If one unit becomes spotted in an area sort of thing, then they all do. I think in Fields of Fire there a bit, that, that comes to, to mind. But uh, let me have a quick look. Well, we've got in the rules here on page 9, 10.2, bore firing. The second paragraph says, might as well have a look here. 
And I might check the rules that Martin's got there that I've got to set aside. Um, uh, yeah, the second paragraph, it says, If artillery roll two dice, modify and refer to the sh shell fire table. Right. If commando roll one dice, modify and refer to the rifle fire table. Remove the emplacement marker. Calls it an emplacement marker there. Which is a bit deceiving because it's a hidden marker and they're also in an emplacement. And... Yeah, I feel like could that be could that be mentioned in the rata? Because that doesn't doesn't quite sound all right. That does it? Hang on. Uh, well, there's nothing in the rata about that about the wording of that. But I mean, my take on it is you're removing the hidden marker. So removing the emplacement marker in an area as soon as any bore unit in that area fires its first shot in the game. So that tends to make me think that it is coming off completely and it is going to like expose the other unit too. So I think I'm going to go with that that way. I will say, I was looking at Martin's stuff, I can't see where it talks about removing the marker, but I'm pretty sure he's got some note of that in there. Well, I'm looking at this bore shell fire, I feel like it, there's something a bit off with that because it says a bore unit's target areas, but they fire at specific units within those target areas. That is the case for rifle fire, but my understanding is it's not for shell fire, so that's maybe another little... I don't know if you're ever going to look at this, watch this video, Martin, uh, but um, if you are, maybe that might be helpful. Um... Uh, or maybe I'm getting something wrong, of course. Um, yeah, I can't see where he's got the bit where it takes the hidden marker off. So I'm I'm going to just go with how I'm seeing that, I think. And we're going to remove that hidden marker completely. Um, I'm going to, maybe, I'm going to have to take a break just now as well. But just before I come back, I'm just going to have a quick look on BGG just to see... You would think again that that's possibly been something that's been asked before. So um, even in that question, I was just looking up because it was based on hidden emplacements. So it might actually be part of the guy's question. So I'm I'm going to have a quick look back on that. See, um, right. I do need to take a pause for now. That is going to be well. That's going to be the bore shell fire segment finished. Because that's, that's the only ones that they can fire. Remember, they only had one unit. It's not as if one could have fired there, one could have fired there. I think they would have multiple fired. Actually, I'm not sure if there'd been two there. Maybe they would. Uh, I don't know if they would took the multiple attack or not. I need to check with that one. Yeah, anyway, I'll take, I'm just going to pause just now and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, cheers. Hi, all. Right, that's me back, being on pause for a few hours there. Um, so, where were we? Right, so the boar shell fire had disrupted here. And um, so we were just carrying on with the next step. Oh, um, yeah, I glanced at the rules again. Um, yeah, before we carry on, I forgot. I, I went and had a look at the re reply to the other question. I still didn't find 100% confirmation, although there was a couple of bits that came across that was said that when a unit fires, the hidden marker in that area gets removed, suggesting that it doesn't sort of stay with the other unit in the area. So I'm going to stick with that. I think that's right. Um... I'm pretty sure it's right, so I'm pretty I'm confident enough to let it go, although not the first time I've said that. <laughs> and it's has been wrong. But um hopefully that's right. So that means that both these that, that hidden unit's now gone from there. And there's no way of them gaining that back. Um so right, anyway, right, let's push on. So bore shell fire, bore recovery. Uh, there's no bore units that need ne needing any recovery. So now British shell fire. Uh, yeah, well, we're in range, however. These guys are all in range, however, they're... Here we go again. Limbered, unlimbered. They're unable to fire because they're on the wrong side. They're still mounted up, ready to go. I just cannot get that term. Uh, so they're on the wrong side. I need to spend action to, in fact, well, I need to find 
that's about it takes the whole does it take the whole turn uh, battery may only unlimber if the leader has reached the area where his objective marker is yeah so they are limbered at the moment they need to unlimber we did reach the objective however we didn't have a movement point left because it costs one one no where are we to unlimber a battery uses one movement point yeah so in actual fact, when I go into the next, when I go into the movement phase, I was saying that I could move, I could move some of them. Now, the the um, the leader will not move any further because there's no objective, there's no objective marker from, uh, so he can't move. However, he's got a radius of one area, so units can be as long as they're in one area around about him. Um, I want to say he cannot move then. He needs to have an objective marker, doesn't he? Yeah. Once his objective marker is reached, he may not move any further. Remove the objective marker. He may now only move if he receives new orders, or if his units in his area are routed, or if he makes an emergency withdrawal. All his units may still move as long as they move to orders, or within the brigade, their brigade radius. So he can't move because he's not got an order, but they could move in adjacent areas um, or they could stay with them. So like I say, rather than um, unlimber them all here, I might well move some about. But we'll get, we'll get to that when we get to that. Right, and then the other artillery we've got, which is in range as well. This is two areas away. You can see it's limbered still and... Finally, these ones as well. So we're only able to move them into position. And, and although they're in range, uh, fire in, they can't fire. So we're just going to have to wait until next turn. All right, so move, moving on. Uh, right, now that is us in the movement phase now. So we're going to move all... You see the first step there is move all routed units. We've not got any, any of that. Um... Move leader alone to an area with a unit present, or move leader with a unit to any area. Now, it's, it's saying that there, but we've already read he needs to be moving to um towards his objective, so these don't have an objective. So if it doesn't have a, an objective, it can't quite do what it's saying there. Um, move remaining units within the brigade radius, like I've talked about. Repeat for each brigade moving. Move HQ beyond long. Leader reaches objective, remove objective marker of unit exists, exit drift area, and then we refer to the status chart. Right, okay, let's move our stuff. Um, okay, so where are we at? Well, I might as well start along the left here. Now, I'm not using the brigade move action, move marker because I'm going to put, I'm going to start using some cubes, I think. So, the fifth Irish, let's start with them. So, there they are, there's their objective. We've got to move one hex closer. One area closer. Um, so they could go here or here. Seems a bit more sensible moving them there, I think. So we are going to move them all into that area. Um, now, hold on. Do we want them all moving in? Because uh, it's that. Artillery is still out of range. One, two, three. Yeah, it's easy, actually. In fact, one, two, three. Yeah, it can only reach north of the river actually that artillery so so um, i'm going to put them to there and i'm just going to mark the leader uh to say that that's then moved and we'll move on to the next ones um now the artillery they are the actually they still got movement no they don't they're the second artillery brigade and they have no objective out there um, so that's fine. So, and they're within one, two away from that. So they're in range of this. They're also in range of this. So, well, I don't have an objective for them anyway. So I can't move the leader any further. I could move one of the artillery, one of the units. Um... So that's not the worst side. Well, we could get multiple fire though from them. Give them the extra plus one. But then what are they? Are they six on their own? See, I mean I could move I could move white one of them into there. 
an actual fact I can move them into there and unlimber them because it takes one movement point to read and then that would allow him to be able to actually fire on this area or this area um, one, two the downside to that one is he's moving in range of oh yeah, no, no you don't want to do that Grant He's moving in range of this artillery. However, more importantly, he's moving in range of this rifle fire. And uh, one of the things I noticed when I was... It was actually when I was reading the rules that Martin's uh, laid out there. That if a... If a battery takes a, a hit, it's eliminated. It doesn't get to mess about. Um... Yeah. Place a number marker under a regiment. Yeah, regiments are slightly different as well. They take just two hats and they're gone as well. Because so, it says, place a number marker under a regiment to show the first SP loss. Eliminate the regiment on a second SP loss. Um, which makes me wonder, if they were to take two hats directly, two SP losses... Like, in a one-hour, would that eliminate them? Uh, well, I think it probably would, because their strength... Their SP is only two at the most, or it's one if they're mounted. So, yeah, I dare say it would. That's one that they're mounted, because they don't have a reduced side the mounted stuff. Yeah, just just looking down there. Look, there's the bit that I'm reading in the rule book here. Um, so that's what you do if it was a normal battalion. I get I get how that works, but um, uh, place a number marker under a regiment to show the first SP loss. Eliminate the regiment on a second SP loss. Actually, I think I want to say that Martin the rules that Martin has actually tells you unless it's enough to eliminate it. Uh, hang on. Yeah, here's the way Martin's got this uh, worded. And there, there's confirmation of the, the, the bit that I was talking about there. And his rules. Well, hang on. Uh, why don't we... Just the actual rule book. I didn't finish that off, so I should have just looked there. The last part says... If one SP loss is applied to a battery, it is eliminated. So one hit to uh, an artillery unit is eliminated. There's no, there's no hanging around for that. Um, it's gone. And uh, here's that. There he's got batteries are eliminated if their strength is reduced. And there's his take on the regiment part. Um, zoom out a little bit. It says, if the target unit is a regiment, and if it already has a number counter under it, or if the number of strength points lost exceeds the strength of the unit, the unit is eliminated. Otherwise, place a number counter under the unit to show the strength loss. Well, with that, if you think about it, if this unit is that way up, if he's mounted like that, then his strength points are 1. However, on the other side, he's a 2. And if he's that way up, his strength points are 2. His other side's a 1. And this isn't a reduced side. You know, this is because it's just a mounted side and an unmounted side. So I want to take it that... He needs, to be, he needs to be hit by 2 strength point losses. Or he needs to be hit by 1 twice, which is the same thing. But if he, if he straight up gets a hit of 2 strength point losses, then I think that's him dead right away, isn't it? Yeah. Because they, they are a bit different. Like I say, they don't have a reduced side. And uh, it's made it quite clear that the artillery takes one hat and then it's gone. So coming back to our thoughts of that, now, where would this guy's priorities lie if he had the choice of firing that, uh, an artillery unit in here or this in here or this in here? Well, that comes down to the Bore zone chart again. Uh, they would all be areas south of the river, so there'd be no nothing to choose from there. 
So then we would put two pot markers in there, two pot markers in there, and two pot markers in there, and we draw a dice. Yeah, so there is a risk that this could be targeted, could be shot at, and could be eliminated. So I don't think that's a risk I really want to have. Um, so I think I would say we want to keep our artillery at range two, don't we? We don't want to risk... I mean, I, I the same thing could happen. I could put one in there, but then this guy could fire at me. So it was just to extend the possibility of getting fire at that. But at the moment, one of these units could fire at that, and then one of them could fire at that. Or they could both fire at one and get the multiple attack thing. So I will be leaving them where they are, but we will be unlimbering them. So we'll be flipping them over on the other side. That costs one movement, one of their two movement points, and then, well, they can't move anymore anyway, because that's them now in a state that doesn't allow them to move, which is limbered. Or unlimbered. No, I think that's... <laughs> God knows. <laughs> uh, right, so, uh, well, actually, let's mark that. So that's that moved. And we'll move along. Right, so we'll look at the first, fourth light. Okay, uh, actually that should be a way now. Now, actually maybe I'll come back to the fourth light. Let's deal with some of the other things that's not going to move. So we've got the... Uh, what are they again? So they still got an objective. I'm trying to find. Well, they're not the first. Ah, they are. They're in the naval Artil artillery brigade. So they're they've not reached their destination. They don't want to move in there. Why did they want to move in there? Was that their historical? It was. Oh dear. Okay. So, in actual fact, then they're going to have to move into there, aren't they? And frustratingly, they've only got one movement, so we can't move in there and then unlimber them. Um. Okay, well, the second, let's get the second English moved, because they've got to move into this area, Clenzo, right? So that's going to come off. Uh, let's just say he's going to move in with this guy, but I'm not necessarily going to move all of these in. Just going to have a look just now. So we've got three more battalions we can move in there. Because, uh, yeah, you can see this is adjacent to all three of these. So that's in for a bit of a... in for a bit of bother, I think. It's also within range of the artillery as well. Um But, I think we'd probably want them all in there. Because it would mean that we could have multiple fire from one of them. Uh, from, sorry, two of them. Let me move that down. Uh, you know, two of these could multi-fire into here. And two of the other two could multi-fire into here, for instance. I mean, they're going to get... Shot upon first. Uh, actually, no, the rifles, our rifle fire will happen first, won't it? Yeah, but we're firing in a, yeah, we're firing in a none. We can't hit them, can we? Because they've got the minus two for um, hidden and the minus two for the emplacement. And we can only muster a strength of uh, 5. So 5 minus 4 is 1. We roll a d6. The most we can get is a 7, which is not an 8 or greater. So unfortunately, they're just kind of having to go in there without... Well, the other, actually, hold on. The other thing there we could have done was check that drift marker. But then... Hmm. Yeah, I forgot the fourth white. The fourth white can't move into there without going into that area. But then they're wanting to go up that way, really, aren't they? Yeah, they're going up that way. Hmm. 
Yes. We could have checked the draft and one of these could have moved across here, or two of them for that matter. Well, or three of them, to be honest. I don't know if that would be clever as well, because then, I, to be honest, I, n I don't know exactly how the close combat thing works. That's something that's would be kind of new to me. Um, hmm. Maybe I should have a look at... The thing is, if I roll, if I decide to move into this drift, we're going to get stuck in the drift as well. You know what? I'm just going to move them up there just now. Yeah. Okay. And then... Uh, unfortunately, the Naval Artillery Brigade is going to have to move up there, isn't it? It doesn't... Well, actually, it does have a choice. One of them could hand back. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do is, he's going to move up with this um, and that reaches the objective so that then comes off um, uh, second English yeah I've moved this objective off right okay I wonder why that was lying there um, <clears throat> so that's moved his objective off does that mean he can now unlimber where he is? Because that would have its uses, because we could fire into that area from there. Then again, aren't you better just going in there with that, Grant? And then you can fire a multiple fire. Because it's, it's not, I mean, this, no, well, that's not true. Because this could actually fire to there. This could fire it there. I want to say it's a slightly better chance, isn't it? Because six. Remember, you get two die rolls for that. And the only the only thing you benefit from firing with two units in an area is a plus one. That's all you get extra. A plus one. Can I leave that guy there? Because it, it says when he reaches his area... Where is it? Um, a battery may only, only unlimber if the leader has reached the area where his objective marker was placed. So I'm not 100% sure if that's if that means that... Right, we know this one could unlimber right now. He's not got movement points left, but we know he could unlimber because the leader has reached his area. However, I could sort of say... Reading that, that that way, the leader's reached his area, so I can now unlimber that guy. And he's within the radius of the leader. I'm going to do that, but I'm a little more hesitant of that one. But I'm just... Oh, these have only got strength at two. Or is this one stronger? <gasps> this one's a six. See, this one's only a two. Right, hold on then. Yeah, that's the one that's not so good. Um... What are the rest of them then? Because that's relevant. I think they're all sixes. I think it's just that one, isn't it? It's just that one that's a two. Because I actually wondered if maybe there should only be one of these. Because they're called... Well, actually, maybe there, maybe there should be, Grant. HMS 40. And there's a six strength one and a two strength one. Maybe I've got... Maybe I made a mistake with that. Let me see. Where does it show the order of battle for that? So that's Captain Pickham Jones. Um, no, it says he's got one heavy battery, which is two times 4.7 inch guns, and one section 12 pounder, which is six times 12 pounders. So my guess is that's a six, and that's a two. Don't think that is right. Uh, so, well, hmm. What do you want to do there then? Do you want to. Do you want to keep them together? Because then the plus one there. Is, this is probably better being a plus one now. The fact that it's only got two strength on its own. Yeah, I think so. 
I think we will just move them together then. That's him. Oh, that's him moved. Okay, moving back. I'll come back to the... Well, I don't actually need to because they've got to get caught. Well, I mean, they could go in here. And it's not necessarily safer going in there because they're going to be able to be fired upon by the, that guy in there and the, that guy in, in there as well. Maybe you need to find out whether it's close combat. Let's leave them just now and we'll come back to moving them. So we've got HMS Terrible. Um, they've still got a, an objective there. Uh, they can only move one. So yeah, he's just going to move one into there. Uh, and that'll be that. Some of the cubes. Uh, kind of long, but we'll come back to him as well. Um, uh, right, what about these guys back here? We've got the Fusiliers, six Fusiliers. We've eventually got his objective marker to here. Uh, they can only move one. So, yeah, basically they're just moving into this area here. Yeah, this is the one that's got it's got a two strength one in it. Which um I don't know if there's some sort of variant, but um it tells you to start with the second Royal Fusiliers as a two. Uh because there is this counter in the game um which is a four, so my guess is it must be could be an event, could be a variant a variant, I'm not sure. Right, and then, so that's them moved. And then the the mounted, well, their objectives are way up, but Huang Wani. Um, so they can, and then we've got them mounted up this time though. So they're going to move uh, two areas. So one into here and then one into here. Uh, I suppose we should spread them out. They look better, don't they? They're all the same, but shows you all their all their different regimental names. Uh, okay, and that's they moved, so they moved two areas, didn't they? Yeah. And then we've got these guys. Now they've reached their objective, haven't they? They they're the first artillery brigade, and they're nicely within range of Huang Wani, so they can fire. So, but they've got two movement, and this is what I was saying. If I choose to move at least just one of them in here, then it's going to be in range of Fort Wiley here. Um, because that that in there that would be one two areas away. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move one of these in here for one movement point and then unlimber it and then the the other two we're just going to unlimber um, is it possible to position one other one I don't think so uh, you know if I could position all three of them because they're six strength and like I say you only got a plus one for the multiple fire but I, I've got to keep them adjacent to there, so I could put one there, but that doesn't hit. In fact, that's not a good idea, because then it's adjacent to Wang Wani. Um, so yeah, I can't, I can't do any better than that. So I either put two of them there, so there's a multiple fire from here, and it Fort Wiley, or I leave the two there and we get the multiple fire in the Wang, Wang Wani. And uh, I think that's what we'll do. So these are going to unlimber there, he moved one movement point in there and then unlimbered because it only cost one movement point to do that. That's him moved. Okay. Um, right, that's all our movement apart from, well, our leaders and our uh, Buller, Long and the HQ, but also this. So I think I want to go and have a look at do we. Well, hang on, no, I just, I've already said I can't move across there anyway. I can't move across. If there was a drift there, I could consider that. And then we've got to 
work our way through the drift. I want to say you can only have one or two units in the drift area. So, yeah, we're not going to do that. Although it's going to, this is going to be a dangerous area for them to move. But what can I do? So these are going to move into here. Um, that is the moving one one area closer to their um, objective. It's moving them into a bit of a iffy area, but because they're not, I mean, they're not even adjacent to this drift here. They've got to then move into the that area before they get to the drift. Ooh, that's going to be that's a bit of a gauntlet run, that isn't it? Well, hopefully, some artillery can help out, maybe. Because the thing is, none of our rifle fire is effective at the moment. Because everyone's still hidden. Yeah. See, see, moving that away up there maybe wasn't such a clever idea then. Maybe we should have left it where it was. Hmm. Oh well, okay. Right, that's all our movement. Um, I'm at an hour there. And yeah, it'd be nice to get through this turn, but I generally give up trying to do that. Oh, actually, sorry, hang on. I've still got Buller. Um, I'll just set them aside. Buller, uh, Long and the HQ to consider. But I think I'll probably just cut the video there as well. Um, because we are going to have some rifle fire from us and from the boars, so it's probably going to be a, a bit, it'll end up being a, a bit long of a part. So, right, what about Buller Long and right Long has generally been wanting to follow the artillery, and I did say he's got two movement as well, so you could they've still got. They're going to move into there. I think if he moves... Well, he's actually... He's better being beside a, um, a battery because he gets, he, gets, he gets a bonus to the morale modifiers and also the recovery modifiers. Um, right, well, hold on then, Grant. What about that? So we've said that this might get fired upon next turn. Yeah, that's where he's going. So he's going one, two into there. Because then he might be able to help. If they do become the target of this. Right, okay, that's, so that's a long move. I'll not bother marking on, but... Um, and then we've got Boer. Well, I think he can sort of just move up now. Everybody's got commands. So yeah, I think I'll just move him back up beside the HQ here. And what we might do with the HQ is just flip him back over, I think. I don't I don't know if I want to start dishing out more commands. Anyway, we've got, going by what I'm seeing down here, these are all planned objective markers that have objective markers underneath. These are all planned objective markers without objective markers underneath, which means that they're still out on the map. So, um, although I could change the orders that are out there for these, I could I could still give them different orders. It's more than likely these are fine, and we've got these four to consider. Um, but three of these are artillery brigades that are probably sitting okay. This one is a second English which you might want to consider given a new objective. I don't know. Again, tactic-wise, should, should I be starting to move across this bridge with them? Into there? Possibly. Thing is, they, they do get that minus two modifier for being in Colenso as long as there's no boar units there. Yeah, I think, I think I'll leave Boar where he is. He's still one, two areas away from that anyway, if I wanted to give it an order. Well, in all, in all honesty, I moved them from here anyway, so one, two, that's as far as you can go. And um, I'll, no, I'll flip this. It costs one to flip it back over. 
but I I need to keep them together if I'm going to benefit from it. So if I do that, it means he will he will get three commands next turn. So I will do that, right? I'm not so sure I'm going to use all the th all if any of the three commands to be honest, but at least I'm going to have the option. Okay, that's an hour and five minutes, so I think I'll just skip on by and uh, I'll move the HQ buller along. Um, refer to the status chart. Well, there's still nothing across the river. Just glancing across here at the status chart. It says, each British unit that enters a towards Lady Smith by road area, which none of us are at, that's off, that's off the map. Each British unit that enters a towards Lady Smith through Hill area, uh, okay, I see there's two, there's two bits there. This is the one by the hill and this is the one by the road. And um, both of them give a, a minus one to the confidence. And however, there's a plus one to the confidence for each battery that we have eliminated. Uh, that we've got eliminate. It says also loss in brackets. Each battery eliminated in brackets also loss. Uh, I'm not sure I understand that. Oh, sorry. Also loss means the loss marker as well. Right. So the confidence would go up by one for each battery eliminated. And the loss marker would go up by one. That's what that means. Yes, okay. Right, well none of that's none of that's happened. So um we're fine and they're fine and whatever. So British assault segment would be next. Gonna have to have a read into that just to see what um goes down with that. Um bore event segment would be next. There's none of that till turn five. Or movement again. I think they all need they need to have a release or a return marker on them, and I think they only get that through events. Um, I'm yet to see any of that. That's all going to be new to me. And uh, so then we're doing rifle fire phase. So I'm going to leave it there. And we're going to come back to that because, um, yeah, it was, it's going to take it to at least an hour and a half, possibly further by the time I get through. What's all fire? But what I will do here is, I think I'll just stop the video and, yeah, I'll maybe just keep going. I'll see, I've got to take a little break anyway, so um, uh, I'll definitely come back to another bit later if, if not the case. Um, so yeah, yeah, okay, this is still ticking over all okay. I, I don't think we've quite got into the, the real meat yet, but um, uh, so, but I'm, I'm Quite enjoying it up to now. Not, not enough of a hand. I think we're going to get beaten up a bit shortly. Um, so we've got these disrupting markers. You'll see that we will get to fire first, and the good British fire f segment comes first. So they will get to. Well, I, like I say, I don't think any of them are going to fire because the hidden markers are still on the units. However, we will then have a chance at recovering these guys before the boars get to fire. So we've all got a role at trying to remove the disruption. And that was one of the things, like recovering the modifiers. Um, a battalion regiment in the same area as Boer would get a plus one modifier. I couldn't, I don't think I could have reached, no, Boer could not have reached up there. But you can see that's something to consider is getting him moving. Um, maybe keeping him up with the, the stuff to give him a bit of a hand, you know. Okay, that's enough for now, Grant. Right, I'll be back later on in the next part. Okay, cheers.